Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today unfortunately is a very sad day. The day that we all feared would come is here and Daniel Smith has announced that it is officially out of the original quinacridone gold. I am recording this video on Wednesday, September 13th. You're probably going to be seeing this on Friday the 15th, but earlier today Daniel Smith sent out an email to their mailing list, including one of my Instagram followers, Emma Crew, who let me know about it, that they have officially announced that after 17 years of the sole paint manufacturer that had this pigment uh, still in their possession, that they have molded their last batch and they are going to be switching over to their new formula. Today's a day that many of us watercolors have been bracing ourselves for for years and specifically in the last couple months a lot of people have been talking about it that we would be losing our quinacridone gold here very shortly and that indeed proved to be true. This is the original quinacridone gold from Daniel Smith. I do have a full color spotlight from my color spotlight series. I'll put a link up in the upper right hand corner so you can go ahead and check that out. It's a beautiful, rich, earthy, golden tone that has this seamless transition between the mass tone and lighter tones that is just, it's absolutely beautiful on its own or in mixes. It can be a replacement, um, a lot of people say, for raw sienna, but I like to have a separate spot on my palette for it. Over the last many years, other companies have had to deal without this since Daniel Smith was the sole owner of the remaining stock of that pigment for, I believe, in the email it said 17 years. And so they have been preparing their own mixtures for, for many, many years. As we move away from Daniel Smith, we get into companies like M. Graham's Nickel Quinacridone Gold and Holbein's Quinacridone Gold, which are very, very similar um, next to each other, where they start off as this really deep, rich mass tone that definitely is similar to the Quinacridone Gold, but as you tint it out, you can see more and more of that PY50 in the yellow undertones. The other two samples I have here are kind of further towards the orange side and even though all four of these are made with the same uh, two pigments, the ratios are indeed quite different. This one has more of the quinacridone burnt orange in it, which is that orangey tone and a lot less of the yellow. And finally we've got Da Vinci's quinacridone gold, which I think is furthest from the original pigment. It's definitely a reddish orangey color and it's beautiful, but it's made with two different pigments, PY, uh, well I guess one of the same pigment, PY150 and PR206 instead of the quinacridone burnt orange. They use a quinacridone red. I'm sorry if my voice is giving out a little bit here. I woke up feeling very under the weather, but I did want to record this today, so I'm not that choked up about it that I'm back here crying, uh, although my heart is a little bit, uh, but just so you know why my voice is a little bit shaky today. So sometime very quietly last year, Daniel Smith started using its new formula, PO48 and PY50, in their 5 milliliter tubes, their little ones, and their watercolor sticks. And that's actually how I first found out about it, because I went and purchased a watercolor stick to try it out and realized it was not the same color. And when I checked the label, I found that it was this new formula. So those have been available for quite some time on the market, and the only way that you could get the original pigment was by buying the... 15 milliliter tube here. I of course am very sad to be losing the original PO49, but even more so, my heart broke last year when I found out that I could no longer get my absolute favorite convenience screen in the same formula, and that is Daniel Smith's Sap Green. And again, if you are a follower of this channel, I have talked about this numerous, numerous times. This is my ultimate favorite green. It just has so much beautiful vibrancy to it. You can use it straight out of a pan. You don't need to mix it with anything. It still has so much life to it. I love this color. And so when I realized I couldn't get it anymore around the same time last year when they were switching out their smaller tubes, they also pulled it from all of their mixes. So they came out with a new formula using their mixture from quinacridone gold and then adding 
the phthalo green to it as well. It's a, it's a pretty close match. The hue is definitely on point. It's still a beautiful color. However, it doesn't have that luminosity that just really glows behind the pigment. So I've also laid out some other greens here that are similar in tone that just haven't lived up to Daniel Smith for me personally. I've got Sennelier Sap Green, which is made from Ultramarine and PY153. And when I first saw this, I was just so sad. This is, it's, it's just so flat comparatively to Daniel Smith. I had always heard people on YouTube talking about they don't use sap green directly out of the tube because it just, it needs a little something. So you either use the sap green and then add a little more blue to it or a little more yellow to it to make it liven up. And it wasn't until I saw Sennelier's and M. Graham's that I was like, oh, I understand now. Because both of theirs, um, M. Graham's is made with two different pigments, but they're actually very similar in hue, is uh, PG7, PY110. They're just really flat and lifeless. The Sennelier, I will say, has a lot more granulation from the Ultramarine, uh, but all in all, they're, they're about the same, and they just, they don't compare to Daniel Smith in my eyes. I also went ahead and pulled the Mission Hookers Green, and that one is a darker variety, but still a nice color. I do like it, although it's a little bit of a deterrent that it's a three pigment mix. I guess that could be said about the new Daniel Smith formula as well. And then I also pulled Mission Gold's Olive Green, which is a much uh, more olivey yellow green color, but it is it does have that same luminosity that I found with the Daniel Smith. One more comparison that I know Tiffany wanted to see, she asked about it in the last video, was does the Da Vinci Hooker's Green Light that I just got stand up to the Daniel Smith original formula? And... No, not really. They're really different colors. Well, I guess not really. It's still a green, but it's a lot more on the blue side. This one is much closer to, say, the Sennelier sap green, and it's it's still good. It's still fine, but I think my heart and my eyes were ruined after I saw Daniel Smith's original green. So why am I making a video about all of this? You've been listening to me ramble for quite some time. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, but every couple of weeks to months, I would check online to, you know, toy with the idea, do I buy a bunch more Quinacridone Gold now so I can save it for later? I did have um, a tiny little tube left that doesn't have a whole lot of paint, and sometime several months ago I picked up another full tube that I haven't broken into yet, but I was just still like, oh, I don't know if I can live my life without these two colors on the left hand side here. And finally last week, I or last week or the week before, I logged on to Blick, uh, Blick Art Supplies, and I saw when I put the quinacridone gold in my cart that there were only three left, so I bought them. <laughs> Again, this is after a year of consideration. I've been on a self-imposed ban from buying new paints just because I have so many here, but I absolutely had to make an exception for Daniel Smith's quinacridone gold, which will no longer be available. So I did go ahead and snatch these up, which means I have a total of four tubes here. And the purpose of today's video, aside from telling you about the shortage of quinacridone gold, is that we are going to try our hand at making the original sap green. This is something that I've talked about doing for quite some time in the comments section here on YouTube, and I figured let's go ahead and try it out. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and keep my sample nearby so that I know what I'm trying to color match to. I've got a half pan ready to go ahead and fill. I've got my little crumply tube here of quinacridone gold, and I also have a tube of the phthalo green blue shade. Now, phthalo green is a really strong tinting color, and whenever you're doing a custom mix for your own pans at home, you want to make sure that you are kind of thinking in your head, which am I going to need more of in this mixture? And again, I'm only trying to fill one pan of this. I don't want to make a whole lot of extra because I typically keep it in my, like, a studio palette, not in a pan set. I am using this little glass uh, piece from a mini picture frame to do my mixing on. I am pouring out about what I think I will need from the quinacridone gold to start. And then we're just going to add a little bit of the phthalo green next to it. We can always add more, but I don't want to waste my precious quinacridone gold by mixing too much of that phthalo green into it and then kneading it to back off. So I've got those two set to the side. 
I've also got a palette knife nearby. You could also use something like a butter knife or even a toothpick if you needed to. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start mixing these two colors together. It's nowhere near as fancy as like mulling my own paints or anything, but you can do this with any convenience mix that you want. And would you look at that? I was trying not to get too much thalo green and it's already uh, a little bit far to that thalo green side. I'm just going to keep mixing these colors together though. We're going to test out the colors as we go and see how close we are or how much we need to add of one pigment, meaning the quinacridone gold, <laughs> or the other. You can do this with any convenience color that you want to make for your palette. Um, I did it with James Gray as well, so mixing up a lot of burnt sienna and um, ultramarine so that I would have that gray ready to go on my palette. And actually, I was afraid that this was going to be too phthalo greeny, but it looks somewhat similar to the way the other one does out of the tube. I need to find a little paintbrush here. And we're just going to go ahead and take some of this mixture and we're going to paint it out on the swatch next to us. And you know what? That's actually pretty darn close. How about that? I thought it was a little bit too far on the phthalo green side. Let's go ahead and take some from another little spot to make sure. So I zoomed in here for you, sorry about that. I wanted to make sure you could see it a little bit better and before I make my decision on whether or not I'm going to stop here or add more quinacridone gold, I want to make sure that the sample is dry so I can compare kind of apples to apples here. This is super, super, super close to what we want. I'm going to just put a tiny, tiny bit more quinacridone gold on my little mixing glass here because I have more of the phthalo green on the back side of my palette knife here that isn't entirely mixed in. You could use a ceramic plate or your ceramic palette for mixing. You could use a piece of really sturdy wax paper if you were careful not to um, tear through it or anything. You just need something that's non-porous that you can go ahead and mix your paint on. So let's go ahead and do one more little swatch, make sure we're in the right spot. I really thought that this would take longer to kind of go back and forth on the two pigments to mix, but it looks like we've got it. So I am really happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and start scraping the paint off of my glass um, tabletop here and trying to carefully put it into this pan. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I just want to say that if you are still interested in picking up quinacridone gold, I recommend trying to check out your local art store, see if there's anything that they can do, if they have any stock that's left over. Um, I know that these were the last three on Dick Blick. I'm sorry uh, for taking those away from other people, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bear it. I needed to have it in my life. Um, I don't know if Jerry's Artorama is still carrying it, or Amazon, or, you know, any of the online retailers. So it looks like I kind of grossly underestimated how much I would need to fill a pan. I can go ahead and mix up another batch and go ahead and put it in there so that I have it ready to go on my travel palette. I hope that if you have convenience mixes that you really like to use or use a lot of, that this uh, kind of simple demonstration helped out a little bit. Don't be afraid to mix your own colors, even if they're not after brands that you already know and love. Um, you can go ahead and make your own mixes if you use a lot of certain uh, combinations and just have those ready to go. I know that some other people like Eve from Eve Bolt, uh, her YouTube channel, she makes handmade paints and she even does like a half and half. So you could also do something where you fill half of the pan with quinacridone gold and half of the pan with phthalo green and that way when you're pulling the, the paint up from the pan you can choose whether or not you want more of one pigment or the other. I know that Mission Gold also has a set that's intended to be used that way with a pure pigment set where you set up the colors and the mixtures next to each other. So don't be afraid to mix your colors. If you are wanting to get your hands on some quinacridone gold to make sure you have some uh, before it is truly, truly gone from the stores, make sure to check out your local art stores or online retailers that still might be carrying it. 
And yeah, I things are going to be quite busy for me over the weekend if you're in San Jose or the South Bay area, uh, San Francisco South Bay area. I'm going to be at both the Luna Chalk Art Festival and Viva Cali San Jose, both events in San Jose, both events will be with Jennifer Charlie who also has her own YouTube channel and we would both love to see you there. If you want to go ahead and come out, mention that you know me from the channel and I will have a little extra something for you. I would love to see you guys there. In the meantime, have Happy painting, and I will see you sometime next week.